Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then my name is Hosanna and on this channel we talk about tech, career and of course lifestyle. On today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about what exactly I do at Microsoft. If you've been following me on Instagram, then you will know that I've been working at Microsoft for almost three years now and I have recently started a new job, uh, well six months ago, so still recent, <laughs> as an Azure specialist and when I told you guys that I'd be moving into this role, I had a lot of questions about what exactly that meant, what is Azure, what is being an Azure specialist, what is cloud computing and just loads of other questions. So I wanted to cover some of them on this video and hopefully give you guys some tips on how you can get started with cloud computing and hopefully land a job as either an Azure specialist at Microsoft or another cloud specialist at other cloud providers such as Google and of course Amazon. So for those of you who don't know, cloud computing is essentially the delivering of computing services such as databases, storage, networking, etc over the internet rather than on-premise so much like Apple offers us iCloud on our iPhones major companies such as Amazon Google Microsoft offer enterprise companies cloud computing services so these companies include places like ASOS which I'm sure you know the NHS um, national security and loads of other major companies across the world so the internet is essentially what we refer to as the cloud. So it isn't a real cloud, which is I'm, I'm sure you guys already know, but it's really important to have an understanding of what cloud computing is at its core for you to be successful in this field and essentially to get started because I'm sure you'll be asked the question at the interview process. One question that I actually got for my Microsoft interview was how would you explain cloud computing to a five-year-old child? So I had to have a really good understanding of it in order for me to put it in simple terms. Cloud computing is really in demand at the moment because it offers companies a number of benefits. So this includes flexible resources, economies of scale, and of course, faster innovation. Cloud computing is also typically pay as you go, which means that companies can turn things on and pay for things when they're really busy and then turn them off when they're no longer using it. So if you think about a university or a school, if they're using cloud computing services, they would use them through term time and then in the summer they would turn everything off and then not use it as much. So that offers lots of flexibility and helps companies manage the change within their businesses and of course save money in the long run. There are three types of cloud computing because not all cloud computing services will be right for each organization. So these fall under three buckets. The first one is public cloud and that is when the cloud computing services are delivered over the internet and the infrastructure is managed by the cloud provider. Then there's private cloud. This is where the cloud computing service are exclusive to one organization. So if you think about a national security organization would want a private cloud and this is over a private network and then finally there is hybrid which is a mix of two and you'll see a lot of companies wanting to go for both for the different types of needs they have. Within cloud computing there are also different cloud computing services and these fall under three categories infrastructure as a service, software as a service and platform as a service. Infrastructure as a service is the most basic category of cloud computing services and this is when an organisation chooses to rent IT infrastructure such as servers and virtual machines. Platform as a service is the cloud computing services which supply on-demand environments in order for companies to test and deliver software applications. And finally, software as a service is the method of delivering software applications over the internet and usually on a subscription basis. So if you think of things like Skype and Office 365. Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing service that was launched in 2008, so has been around over 10 years now and has grown exponentially. Azure offers all the services that I spoke about today and so much more. I think we have a portfolio of 200 uh, products now. Um, Azure is definitely one of the fastest growing cloud providers out there and actually over 95% of Fortune 500 companies use Azure. As an Azure specialist, 
this, my job is essentially to specialize in the Microsoft Azure cloud computing services and help our customers to adopt it. So an organization may come to me and say, Hosanna, we would really like to be on the cloud and using cloud services in the next two years. How can we do this? How can we get off on premise and exit our data center and then start using all the amazing cloud computing services that there are in Azure? And it's essentially my job to advise and give guidance on how this can be done. The Azure specialist role is a technical sales role, which means that essentially, although I sit in sales, I am expected to be technical as I need to have a deep understanding of the technology which I am working with my customers on and be able to help them along that journey. However, it is still a sales role, so I do have a target and I work with a portfolio of customers. I really enjoy the role because I guess it gives me the best of both worlds. I get to be in sales and really practice my non-technical skills, but still use my technical skills to have an understanding of Azure. On a day-to-day -day basis, my day looks like a lot of meetings. And of course, before the pandemic, I'd be physically traveling to those meetings. As part of my customer base, I cover the whole of the UK. So I've got some customers in Scotland, some in England, some in Wales as well. And I think that's really great because I get to see a different perspective and build a great rapport with the customer when I'm actually face-to-face -face with them. I really enjoyed traveling for work as well. I think it was just one of the things I imagined as part of kind of my job when I was growing up so I was really lucky to have had that experience but of course because of the pandemic and lockdown I have been working from home for well over a year now uh, before the pandemic I actually did work from home as well but certainly not as much as I do now um, and the only thing that has changed uh, since then is of course that I have all my meetings online um, and not face to face and I think I have more meetings now because obviously when I was traveling a lot of that time would be spent on the train working and things like that but obviously now um, I don't have to do all of that so I wake up kind of 9 a.m and start work whereas before I'd wake up at like 6 a.m travel I might have my first meeting at 10 then travel down to another meeting or travel back and things like that so I wouldn't have meetings on the train so I am working slightly more and it's a little bit different but I'm really looking forward to having um, the time back to kind of being face to face with some customers as well. In those meetings, my role as the Azure specialist is essentially to talk about all things Azure, try to get an understanding of what my customer's strategy for the cloud is, and then discuss how Microsoft can help support that. And that might look like doing presentations, doing demos, or just generally having a round table on things about Azure and how my customers is going to be able to adopt those services. Having to do presentations is pretty much a requirement for almost all roles within the sales business because that is part of us selling to the customer, but specifically as an Azure specialist because you're really going to be the person who gets the customer to a yes. Your demo or your presentation is really going to highlight the value of Azure to the customer. So you have to really make sure that the presentation that you do or the demonstration that you do really sells that message. As part of my role, I also, of course, have meetings with my internal team. So I work with a number of people in different roles who help me to grow the Azure business. So that's including people like my account executive, my product marketing manager, and also my territory channel manager. And essentially as a team, our job is to ensure that customers understand the value of Microsoft. We look at how we can grow the Azure business and how we can basically take it to market. So that that can be things like planning campaigns, planning webinars, planning event days, and a number of different things that come outside of kind of the day-to-day one-to-one with the customer. The skills that I think you need to become an Azure specialist include number one, a willingness to learn and technical ability. So it doesn't really matter if you're not the most technical person, as long as you're willing to learn it and have a passion for it, basically. Um, technology and the, the product is always changing. So it means that you have to be able to keep up with it. So as long as you have that drive and determination and you're not scared off by the amount of change and the amount of things that you need to learn, you'll be okay. 
Number two is communication. Of course, you're going to be spending all of your time communicating with people. So that's with your internal team and of course the customer as well. So learning to build a rapport with the customer, learning to really listen to what they're looking for and what support they need and being able to convey the message properly and be able to speak about a technical concept at a level that the customer is going to understand. So communication is really important. Number three is public speaking skills. As I said, a huge part of my role is presenting and demoing. So I need to have really strong public speaking skills in order to be able to, to basically be able to do those presentations. And also as the Azure specialist, you're essentially the product lead. People look to you for all things Azure. So if there's a webinar or if there's an event on Azure, whether it's internal for Microsoft with the customer or it's with a partner, you will probably be expected to present there and speak to an audience of people. I have done that multiple amounts of times I've spoken to people at an audience of 100, 50, 10, all different types of sizes and you have to be very comfortable with that because they'll be looking to you as the expert to sell the message. Number four, the skill that I think you need is definitely influencing. Uh, at the end of the day, you are a salesperson and your job is to influence the customer and basically drive them down a specific direction and support them on that journey. So you have to make sure that you have influencing skills and they know and look to you as the expert and an advisor, essentially, um, and you need influencing skills to do that. The first step to getting started with cloud computing is understanding the fundamentals. So that's things like understanding the difference between infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service. Also understanding the benefits that come with cloud computing, the governance that's needed in order to run cloud computing services, and most importantly, the security that's needed to protect the data in cloud computing. The second step to getting started with cloud computing is simply to choose a provider. Once you understand the basics of cloud computing, then you can pick a provider who you want to skill up on and work with. So as I said, I obviously work with Azure, but you can work with GCP or AWS as well. So what I would suggest is that you sign up to their portal online and just start provisioning services, learn how to spin up a virtual machine, learn how to set up a database and have a really good understanding of their portfolio of products and basically their unique selling point. The final step to getting started with cloud computing is to of course look at getting your certifications so certifications are really big in the cloud computing space they're a great way to show that you essentially have the skills to do the job and they essentially boost your application so for me in my role I'm expected to do things like the Azure fundamentals and then of course the Azure administrator exams as well um, certification within cloud computing are role based so if you are looking to be an Azure specialist in infrastructure then of course you can take the same route as me but if you're looking to do data and AI instead or DevOps then you can take a different route. It is generally recommended in cloud computing to start with the fundamental certifications and then make your way up to expert. There are lots of resources to get started with skilling up on Azure. In fact, I have an entire Instagram post uh, which is focused on this and I will link it in the description below. But I would say the best place to get started is to go on the company's website. Most companies have the free landing page for training. So and for Azure, we have Microsoft Learn and all of the training is completely free. And for Azure as well, if you sign up to our free training days, you even get the money off your certification so that's a free certification that you can take there are other learning resources for cloud such as websites like a cloud guru i've heard this is really amazing and has lots of really great recommendations so i would definitely say check that out there's also Pluralsight, which i've used to skill up for my azure administrator exams i thought it was really good if you get an instructor who explains the topic really well and there are lots of great ones on there there is of course places like Cosora and of course udemy as well finally you can look at one of the best resources for learning which is of course YouTube. There are a number of YouTubers on here which talk about cloud computing and help you to scale up. One of them is called Azure Dan. You should be able to find him if you just type in his name. And there are other ones as well, which again, I will link, I will link in the description below for you guys to check out. 
Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more of an insight into what I do day to day and what it essentially means to be an Azure specialist. If you have any more questions, of course, continue to DM me on Instagram or drop a comment below. Please like this video, comment, and of course, subscribe, and I will see you at my next video. Bye.